Section 1.4 focuses on beginning proofs, specifically two column proofs. During first semester, we will do a ton of proofs, so please make sure that you understand this idea and if you have any questions that you ask as soon as possible. You can think of a proof as an argument, and when you are doing a proof, you want to consider the following steps. First, you have to draw the diagram that you're given. Draw the original diagram, mark it with tick marks. If this is not done, your work will not be accepted. Next, take a look at what you want to prove and work backwards to reach your conclusion. And you want to pretend that someone who does not know a thing about geometry can read this proof and fully understand it. And in order to do so, this means that you have to write everything down, even if it seems unnecessary or obvious to you. Everything must be written in order for you to receive full credit on a proof. Specific steps will be graded, so please make sure that every step is included. And when you are doing your proof, you want to make sure that you are using complete sentences. Shorthand wording will not be accepted for full credit. These five components will be a part of each of your proofs. And when you are doing your in-class work and homework, you want to make sure that all five of these components are listed. First, you want to rewrite your givens. Obviously, we already discussed the diagram. Second thing you want to do is write your prove and conclusion statement. Keep in mind in step two, the prove and conclusion, those are used interchangeably. If you see prove or if you see conclusion, that means that you are doing a two-column proof. In the left-hand column of your T-chart, you want to write your statements. And in the right-hand column, you write your reasons. In the left-hand column, the statements are going to be specific to your given diagram. So it's specific to the problem that you are given, the proof that you are doing. While in the right-hand column, everything there, our reasons column, that will include general information. And this general information is information that we've learned in this geometry class thus far, such as theorems, definitions, and postulates. Keep in mind that this is where you want to write your complete sentences. And these sentences are most of the time going to be in if-then form. On the next page, we are going to write out a bunch of reasons that we've already discussed indirectly. Some of them will be new, some of them we've already seen. But then the next page, this page here, we will be focusing on reasons that we can write in the right-hand column of our proofs. So we've already learned these theorems, definitions, and postulates. A lot of these we've actually learned in earlier sections, like section 1.2. I am going to be typing these out. Please make sure that you are writing them in your own handwriting. Use the pause feature as necessary if I'm writing or typing too quickly for you and you cannot write as fast. Please make sure you use the pause feature. The first thing that we discussed in section 1.2 is that if an angle is a right angle, then it has a measure of 90 degrees. Well, since it's a definition of a right angle, we can flip that sentence and say that if an angle has a measure of 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Definitions are always reversible, and we'll discuss that more in this chapter. We could do the same thing for straight angles. So if an angle is a straight angle, then it has a measure of 180 degrees. But we can flip that and take what we call the converse of that statement, which you'll learn more about, and say that if an angle has a measure of 180 degrees, then it is a straight angle. So essentially, those first four ideas that we wrote down Two of them are the same, and the other two are the same. They're just flipped around. Now let's discuss acute angles as well. So similarly, we can say that if an angle is an acute angle, then we know that it has a measure that is greater than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. We can also flip that or reverse it and say that if an angle has a measure that is greater than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees, then it's an acute angle. By definition of an acute angle, that's what we know is true. Let's talk about obtuse angles. If an angle is an obtuse angle, 
then it has a measure that is greater than 90 degrees. and less than 180 degrees. We can reverse that though and say that if an angle has a measure that is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees, then that angle must be an obtuse angle. Like I said, please be using the pause feature if you could not write as quickly as I am typing. We talked about right, straight, acute, obtuse angles. And this is something new. So within your proof, if you have to use the reason addition, you can write in the reasons column that you used addition. And you want to show what you added together and what the sum comes out to be as well as subtraction. And we'll see an example in a couple of minutes with our next video in which you will use these ideas. So addition and subtraction are also reasons that you can add in the right-hand column, the reasons column of your proof. Let me talk about two angles that have the same measure. We know that if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. But then we could go ahead and reverse that as well. So if two angles are congruent, then that must mean that they have the same measure. We know that if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And if two angles are straight angles, then they are congruent. Now. We cannot reverse those. We'll be doing some examples in the next video.